Hello, I'm Jeff DeGraff, professor at the Ross School of Business at the University of Michigan, and I'm delighted today to talk to you about the Competing Values Framework, which has been around for a long time. It's been studied by universities everywhere, and it's used by some of the most prestigious companies and organizations in the world every day. What makes the Competing Values Framework unique is that it connects all the dots. It looks at individual leadership behavior and how those behaviors produce specific types of organizational culture and competency and how those organizational competencies produce very specific types of value. So it syncs everything up. The way it does it is very unique. It looks at two positive tensions, the tension between flexibility and the tension between stability and the tension between the internally facing organization and person and the externally facing organization and person. Now what that does is it creates four types of profiles in the organization that happen at the individual level, the organizational level, and of course at the outcome level. The first type of profile that we have is what we call the create profile. The create profile is highly flexible and externally focused. When we think of this, we think about the person who does things first, the person who loves to do things new, the artist, the person who's the visionary, the revolutionary. This is where we think of you know, Steve Jobs. We think of the person who's creating the future first. These are people who are held together by their vision. This type of organization likes to run a lot of experiments. This type of person loves to dabble in experiments. This type of person likes to speculate about what's going to happen in the future. And this type of person loves diversity. The upside, they're very much going to come up with the breakthrough solution. The downside, a lot of risk with this person. Now let's look at the other side. Let's look at the internally focused and stable person. Let's look at the control-based person. This is the person who's held together by process. This is the engineer. This is the medical doctor. This is the troubleshooter. This is where there's a right way and a wrong way. This is where there's a lot of complexity. Complexity, so we're going to see a lot of methodology. We're going to see a lot of process in this kind of a person. There's a lot of data that we have to ab uh, absorb here. Risk is not an option because failure is not an option here. Think about surgeons. Think about people who fly airplanes. We've got to get it right. Usually there's a lot of what's called scalability or these are very large kinds of endeavors that these people undertake. So they've got to get it right. So there, there's much less risk in the control quadrant, but there's also uh, more incremental innovation. Radical innovation with a lot of risk, incremental innovation with a little risk. This tension is the tension about how much innovation we need. Well, let's look at another tension. Let's look at that individual who is externally focused, but also stability focused. We're going to call this the competitor or the compete quadrant. This person is very much like an athlete. This person is a hard charger. They're the kind of people who get projects done. They overcome barriers. You know, they defeat their enemies. They're very goal focused because goals are what holds them together. They're very much speedsters, so they don't focus on the long term, they focus on the shorter term. They're very much interested in opportunities that they've got. So if they see that someone else has a solution, they're gonna quickly go to that person, make whatever kind of deal that they need to make to get that solution in hand. The downside of that group is they're not very good at building sustainability in those organizations because they're really much more concerned about winning the game today. Well, let's look at the opposite of that competitor or that compete quadrant, and that's the collaborator or that collaborate quadrant. And that collaborator wants to do things that last. That collaborator is held together by the values that they have and the values that they're trying to instill in the organization. So these are teachers and community builders and counselors, and they love to network. They absolutely talk to everybody all the time about what's going on in their life and who might have an answer. They're very very good at building these communities because they have they have a sense of values and shared values that the community likes and they're absolutely committed to training people and to developing people so you often see them in groups this group of people is incredibly good at developing a sustainable organization so we might think of like a university up here but they're not necessarily the fastest moving people so the second tension is the tension about how fast 
Do we go really fast and not be terribly sustainable, or do we go a little bit slower and develop that culture and competency that's going to make us sustainable? Now, there are three key things you have to know about the competing values framework. First of all, we're only as good as our weakest quadrant because we're going to need all four quadrants to create and to innovate. So we, if we're really great at, uh, at one quadrant, let's say we're great at the create quadrant, but we don't, we're not great at the, at the control quadrant, we're not going to be able to take that idea and make it a really large idea. We're just going to have a lot of really good ideas, but it's never going to be systematic enough to make it work everywhere. So we've got to have all four groups to make this work, and we've got to sync that up. The second thing is we have to build a portfolio, and the reason is one style of management isn't going to work everywhere. So we're going to have to manage our projects differently and we're going to have to manage them differently at different times. So sometimes we have to start a project out really fast at the beginning in that compete quadrant, but over time we want sustainability. So we're going to have to put the sustainable person, that, that collaborator into that project as the project goes on. Now finally and most importantly, how we create is what we create. And one of the biggest challenges that people have is they'll want one type of outcome Come, but they'll run a different set of practices and put different kinds of people on that challenge. So think about it this way. Let's say, for example, you want a radical new idea. Well, that's the create quadrant. That's what that person's designed to do. But instead, what you do is you, you, you want to create outcome, which is radical innovation, but you build a lot of systems and processes and metrics for that. What systems and processes and metrics do is they eliminate variation. That's going to accidentally, not intentionally, it's going to stifle the kind, of, the kind of deviancy that you're looking for, the kind of radical revolutionary person you're looking for in the crate quadrant. So we're going to have to pick the right processes and the right kind of person for the right kind of outcome that we're looking for. The key to all of this is what we're trying to create is positive tension, and we're going to do that by creating diversity in our groups by putting the right combination of people together to use this, this uh, constructive conflict in a way that it produces hybrids, it produces those solutions, it produces the types of innovations that we're looking for. Thank you.